Everything from starting up the game will be included in this first look at the simulator game on Xbox Series X. And I'm very much enjoying it. I'm going to try not to let my OCD get in the way of the fun here when it comes to something I've talked about before in the past, which was the roads and how they can be incredibly wonky. Sometimes the geometry can be really messed up. And I found out that's actually a result of having the live photo geometry, the live Bing aerial shoots that can sort of dampen your experience. So what we're going to do is real simple. Well, not what we're going to do. I don't know why YouTubers say that we're not doing shit. I'm doing all the work. You're just watching for, you know, two people that are watching. I'm going to make sure that the stuff is offline and I'll show you where that is in case you ever find yourself having those problems. You see, I sometimes like flying at a sort of a lower altitude so that I can uh, enjoy the scenery like here. I'd love to be at that height or that height there in the uh, picture on the right hand side. There's nothing wrong with that. I love when people tell you in a game how you're supposed to play, how high you're supposed to be up in the air. It's like, bet y'all go where I want. I paid for this shit. Well, it's on Game Pass, it kind of showed you the icon there. It was a dollar again. The amount of times I've played this game. I'm telling you, one of these days I'll actually buy it. And it's really nice too that I bought some of the games as well before getting my Xbox on the Microsoft Store, not Steam, because that allows it to be sort of a cross-purchase, if you will. That way you could play it on your PC, you could play it on your on your Xbox. I do that with Forza. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'm actually going to uninstall it from the computer, even though I can run it like flawless, pretty much max graphics, 60 FPS. I honestly don't give a shit about that. The amount of room it takes on my computer, having to have the folders in different locations, having your assets here, the game there, it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? So here's how long it took to, to boot up. So what you want to do is go to options. You want to go to general options. Then you want to go to data or data. So I have online functionality. I don't even know what that does. So just whether you want to allow the internet connectivity during your session. Sure. <clears throat> but Bing Data World Graphics. Stream high quality aerial imagery. And then photo photogrammetry. Photogrammetry. Whatever. I'm French for fuck's sakes. Uh, this will show like real buildings and stuff like that. I don't want the air traffic, the live weather, or even the multiplayer. Because it's like, I don't care about any of that stuff, honestly. But we'll still have that on. And then when it comes to traffic, I, I turned a few things down. So by default, everything's like on 100. Maybe I'll leave the fauna at 100. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so from here, yes, in case you're wondering, graphics, the only thing you can do is turn on and off HDR10, which is funny because I, I have a LG monitor, 32 inch. I love it. It's the perfect size for me. And it is HDR something, but no game I ever played does it ever work. So whatever. It's definitely not why I bought the monitor. We'll apply and save. We'll go to world map. I'm trying to think. You know what? I'm going to go back to where I was yesterday. This is actually, truth be told, this is actually like the third time I'm actually recording. And I haven't uploaded the other videos because I felt like I was complaining too much about some of the little, you know, problems that I have with the game. And I'm like, Bitch, nobody's going to want to hear you moan and complain about that. So I completely deleted 
several hours of footage. Let's bring us... Let's bring us up to at least, uh, you know, 9 o'clock here. We want to be able to see the landscape. And we're not going to do the entire flight. <laughs> we ain't got time for that. Well, I do. I just don't feel like it. And I'm going to choose an Airbus, typical A320. And the reason for that is actually simple. Because if I use a plane that doesn't allow me to really go high, I find then I end up focusing too much on, oh, that road looks a little bit off. And then I start getting sidetracked and complaining about a certain things. If I just stick to a half decent height altitude, I find I can shut the fuck up about those things. So that's why I'm redoing this video, but I'm still sharing with you who I am and, you know, a couple things that do bother me, but actually it's only just the one thing. It's the roads. Everything else is perfect, but there's something about the roads and it's worse when you have the, uh, the Bing life service and all that kind of stuff. So the brake left on the D pad, you don't have to do the Y and B thing to let go of the brakes like you do on PC with the mouse. You bring the mouse up by actually pushing down on the left analog stick. And then you get this and, you know, we can go to the weather. We're going to get rid of that wind. We've got scattered clouds, broken clouds. I like when it rains. Okay, maybe not quite like that. It's a little bit dramatic. It's a little too much. Let's go back to scattered clouds. Don't worry, we'll, we'll take off in a minute. Scattered clouds, broken clouds. I'll do rain one more time. Because sometimes it's actually really nice once you get up there in the air. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. Full throttle. Now, I'm mainly not going to be inside the cockpit. I'm going to be third personing. Third personing. That's a word. That shit. So you could zoom in a little bit. It is 30 FPS. On a Series X, there is no performance mode. This isn't Forza Horizon 5. There's no quality mode. So I do that inside the cockpit. See, it wants me to go to the right in order to go to Orlando. Maintain a 70% throttle during the initial climb. Yeah, see that pink arrow at the top left? Because I don't have that VFR thingamathingy. Why does it keep turning down my engine? Like, what is going on? Oh, I'll talk about that in a minute, too, because that's actually something uh, that I'm confused about. That maybe some people that are more you know, well-versed in this world will understand. So if you look at the bottom left, we've got the speed at the far left. Then we've got engine one and two, and you can see the white needle is redlining at 88%. I got my button on the A... My finger on the A button all the way down. I mean, I let go of it now because it's fully engaged. But if I turn down the engine a little bit, I can only choose between like 25%. It's like nothing happens. Or 88%. See all the beautiful clouds? You know what? I just reached for my mouse. That's funny. Now it's going to do like an autopilot thing. We're not going to do rain. We're going to do scattered clouds. We're going to close that. Close that. I just wanted to do that for the takeoff. I love storms and all that. Now we're gently going to turn into the direction of Orlando. Even though we're probably not going to make it all the way there.
And when you take it for what it is, even from this altitude, it is pretty damn good. And again, this is no Bing. I want to stress that there, there's none of this high quality aerial bullshit with satellite pictures. This is literally just the textures of the game. What it would look like if you were playing offline. Okay. My biggest complaint. More than the roads. <laughs> and I'm wondering if there's a... Uh, like a logical explanation for this. I won't go to the menu. Just take my word for it that there's, there's nothing in, in the menus that I've seen. That sort of talks about what I'm talking about. So if you look at the engines, they're at 88%. Okay, great. Now, if I start tapping on the B button, see that little white bar, like in the speedometer looking icon thing? See how it's starting to go down a little bit? But it's not actually reflecting the power of the engine. The power of the engine remains at 88%. Now, if I go back just a smidgen more, sort of, let me try to level off my airplane here. I feel like we're we're climbing too fast. I'm trying to taper it off here. Obviously, if we're going down, it's going to make me go faster. I'm just trying to have it so it's fairly balanced. Okay, so if I bring it down to, let's say, like right here. Notice what the needle is doing? It's automatically dropping that shit. Okay, well, that's weird. It wasn't doing that yesterday. I don't know if it was a glitch. But notice how it's now at like 57% speed. Why doesn't the needle match that little white square above it that I set it to. That's all I'm saying. If I drop it down just a little bit more, look at my speed. It's locked in at 286. My altitude is pretty rock solid. I'm not further slowing down. It's like it's not affecting it. So I'm picturing myself with an actual thing, you know, like the joystick thing with the, the thruster that you push back and forth and moving that back and forth and it's seeming like it wouldn't be doing shit. So why is that happening? Because I can make the white square move. See again? I'm slowing down even more, but we're locked in at that 57%. I don't know if that has to do with some of the accessibility features because it's it's on easy for the most part. Because I do have full control of the engine. It's just, why is it not... Like, why isn't it following suit? Why isn't it now gradually slowing me down more? Is it because it knows I would stall? I don't know. So you know what? We are going to go take a look uh, really quickly at the assistance options. So if we go to, you know, piloting, it's on custom. See, auto rudder, assisted yoke. That's adjust whether you want the yoke controls to pitch to be assisted to help maintain level flight if the controls are left alone. Uh, assisted landing, assisted takeoff, AI radio communication, anti-stall protection I turned off, auto trim, adjust whether you want trim controls to be assisted to maintain level flight during cruise. Assisted controller sensitivity because it helps tweak the yoke commands allowing for easier control, right? So it's like, I just don't know. Let's see, most of this is off. I just don't get it, like where, where it would be. Navigation aids, routes and waypoints, taxi ribbon, the landing path. Adjust whether you want to have smart camera trigger automatically or manually. If automatic, the camera will automatically aim at nearby points of interest. Yeah, I don't want that. Failure and damage. Yeah, it's pretty much all 
disable just because I'm just trying to have a bit of fun. As I get used to things, sure, I'll make it harder. Just whether you want the engine fuel mixture automatically adjusted. Oh, my God. <laughs> Unlimited fuel, sure. Aircraft lights. Gyro drift. If this is enabled, the gyro will require mid-flight recalibration for certain aircrafts. Anyhow, so there's just like nothing in here. And it's just a little bit frustrating because I just don't understand how, how it works. Like if we go to power management and throttle. You see what I mean? Increase throttle, decrease throttle. Straight forward. But there is no like... Like why... See, now I have my engines at maybe 30%. Why aren't my, why isn't my speed and all that adjusting to that? That's what I, that's what I want to know. Like, I almost have to, do you know what I mean? Like, I almost have to shut off the engines. Yesterday when I did this, it would toggle between 88% and 25%. I couldn't get it at 57%. Look at my altitude, very smooth, speed, very smooth. But why is my plane not slowing down? But if I shut the engine off, the game has no problem with me shutting it off. Actually, putting it all the way to zero, it's forcing it to stay at 24% so that I'm still at somewhat of a safe level. Is that what that is? I don't know. So now it's doing 40%. But you know what? I don't want to drive you people crazy. Again, this isn't complaining, honestly. It's just making an observation of something that I don't really understand. We'll crank it up just a little bit more. Because like I said, I just want to enjoy the flight. Now some... Some planes, I find they have a little bit of a nicer interior in the sense of being able to see better. The reason I don't play inside the cockpit is really simple, because I like to be able to see most of the stuff around me. I know this is more, like, realistic, more immersive for most people. Most people aren't, like, you know, Superman flying behind the plane outside. But I feel like I can sort of pan around a little bit better after and... I don't know, it's just, it, it's fun. We're going in the yellow. Let me see if I can manage to keep myself just out of the yellow. Because once you're in the yellow, go figure, my controller starts to shake. It's almost like it's a little bit too much. Does that make sense? And then you start getting a little bit of turbulence. So that's why my mild observation I made earlier was warranted because how do I keep myself nice and smooth in that green zone accurately? I'm almost tempted to get the thruster just, you know what I mean, to see if that makes a difference, but still use my controller to, to control the airplane. Because I really like the controller. I really do. Yeah, maybe I just don't know how planes work. And in general, you're not supposed to crank things up to 80%. And I know with this plane, generally, you'd be flying a lot higher too. But I don't think that affects your speed. Like, I know there's less oxygen the higher you are up and stuff like that. I don't know if your engine's at 80% at 15,000 feet versus 40,000, if that makes a difference. I started climbing a little bit because I knew that that would slow me down, put me back into the green... But yeah, this is a very, very relaxing, uh, enjoyable experience for me. And generally, I do fly 
you know, a bit lower than most people. I still think that looks good. I think that looks great. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do something a little dramatic. Just to kind of zoom down there a little bit. Now that's just the textures rendering there. Oh wow, am I ever flying fast now? But I just wanted to do this momentarily just to show you how I'm like right in the red. 500 knots, that's like crazy fast. My controller is shaking like a mad bastard. All right, the water looks great, the clouds. The weather system is just amazing in this game. Now I put on the cursor active mode, so it kind of goes into autopilot. Look at where it put the engines on its own. It just knows to do that. So at any time I need help, I could just hit the cursor mode because I have that feature enabled. And I could just be like, all right, so what's the time of day like? Let's crank that up a little bit. Scattered clouds. What about some broken cloud? Oh, no. That's too much. Too many clouds. Yeah, let's do that because it, it just, I don't know, it looks nice. And I can still enjoy my flight. Like I said, with, see, AI pilot assist is currently flying the aircraft while the cursor is active. To resume flight controls, push L. So it's like, bam. Now let me take over again. I don't know what the airspeed should be for, like, cruising. Honestly, I think it's 242. I think that's why there's that blue. I think the blue, you know, 242 is sort of like the average cruising speed. It's like a car. My car, well, I don't own my own car, but could technically go 220. That doesn't mean you're going to be cruising at that speed. So just like American Truck Simulator, I said... You know, in many ways, you see a lot less when you're playing Flight Simulator. You're not seeing all this traffic, all these buildings. Uh, you're not doing difficult turns and all this sort of stuff. Hauling cargo. So in this game, in a way, you see less. I wish that tip thing would get the fuck off my screen. All right, let me get rid of it. There we go. But when you're playing a flight simulator, you see more in a different kind of way. Like, look at the clouds and the graphics. This is almost photorealistic. I mean, apart from the floating numbers. Which you can turn off. And I don't want to. Uh, the weather system is great in American Truck Simulator. But not this great. Like, look at those clouds. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's just... It's a spectacle. I wonder how many kilometers an hour 242 knots is. Maybe. I'm going to look at my computer and I'm going to look it up. 242 knots. Whoops. in kilometers per hour. Oh, wow. That's 448 kilometers an hour or 278 miles an hour. I like kilometers because no offense, most people in the world use that. 
Which is why when I was doing the 500 knots, yeah, that's almost a thousand kilometers an hour. That's, yeah, like it might seem slow here, but it but it's realistic. And it even said, I think, during ascending, no, descending. Yeah, during your, you know, ascending there of the, the aircraft, I think it says to be around 67%. <clears throat> my right analog stick is used to naturally look around I wonder if there's a way for me because I can use the LB button in the directional pads to look to the side perfectly like this and like this if I could have it so the right stick doesn't move me up and down I use the directional pad to do that instead and then I can use the right analog stick as sort of like a thruster. I don't know if that's possible. Or if you'd even want to do that. But now this is making a lot more sense as to why the plane also feels much nicer. For obvious reasons. See, now that I'm going down, I'm not the one that's turning down the power of the, uh, of the engine. It's kind of doing it on its own. And I think that, again, is to make sure that as I'm descending, what are you noticing about my speed? It's not astronomically going through the roof. That's because of the assistance stuff, I'm sure. Even though I didn't see anything in terms of, like, variable speed control, you know, while maneuvering the plane whatever at some point I will turn all of it off so that I have full control and maybe then I'll see that I have what appears to be hopefully better control over my thruster power so I am just descending a little bit because I do like being around 10 to 12,000 feet. We still get to see down below. And I would say this is probably one of my favorite planes. I really do like it. I also like the sound of it, because I also turned the engine sounds down a little bit so it wouldn't be too overbearing. Some of the jet planes, like there's a... is it a Beechcraft? I can't remember. No, a Cessna. Oh man, the sound of that engine is quite piercing. So if you're like recording and you're talking and you don't have the volume properly balanced, it's uh... it can be a little bit ear-piercing. Alright, I'm going to do something dramatic here. Because as you get closer, some of the terrain will render in. And if I crash... doesn't really matter because I have all that stuff off. Actually, let me see if I can land real quick. Assistance. Let me just look at something else. Easy custom navigation. Is it piloting? Assisted yoke. See, assisted yoke. That's the pitch and roll. Assisted rudder. Assisted landing takeoff. But where's the assisted thruster? I don't see that. Could be under navigation aids. No. Whatever. So 
So again, this stuff doesn't happen too often again. Where it looks all like blurry like that. Some parts of the world just aren't always like rendered in. This is where sometimes having the online thing will help a bit. But I find like when you land, because <clears throat> we're gonna more or less end the video here. I don't I don't want to make this. Uh... Why is it? Why am I accelerating? I forget how to land, like how to turn the engine off forget how to do that or hit oh the brakes the brakes is x i think see now that we're like on the ground and things are rendered in i wanted to show you that even at ground level things actually look really good like look at the grass uh, the trees in, in the distance, some of the random houses that they have. Let me accelerate a little bit more. To reduce throttle B to brake press X, right? I'm not trying to brake. You know what I should do? Honestly. I hope it doesn't take me into fucking outer space now. No, you bastard. There we go. No, I did it again. There. We can see better now. Like, look at that. That looks really good. Like, the graphics of the, of the grass. The random buildings in the middle of nowhere with no roads leading to them. I mean, it looks great. Right? I like poking fun at some stuff. For real, people can't get upset at that. Alright, let's go ahead and... take off. It is a dumb question, but I'm going to say it anyways. Why is it that you have to put the wheels in? I wonder what advantage that has from an aerodynamic standpoint, if you know what I mean. Like, what, what does that do? I don't know. Anyhow. The other thing I'm wondering, my last question to you. I know this is just a game, but is the flight time per the speed I'm actually doing realistic? So would going from Miami to Orlando, like how long this has been taken? Let's say it took me, you know, a real hour to get there. Is that how long it would take in real life, or is everything sped up? I don't know. I really don't know. Any. That's going to be it for me. So, as always, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. And I'll bend it in half. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I mean, naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next video. Bye for now.